How do you go about creating a character, whether it's for a show or just for an audition for a show? Uh, you need to come up with some answers to some questions so that you can flesh your character out. And the more you can do that and the more you can create uh, a rich, full life for your character, the better your, uh, your believability will be as an actor. Hey everybody, this is Doug Fall with Augmented Actor. So we're talking about characters here and how to develop them. Sometimes we're given sides for an audition. We only have one page to look at. And so we have to fill in a lot of blanks that we don't really know about. That's the hard part of acting because, you know, when you're auditioning for something, you have to make decisions that may not be the right choices. And so we kind of tend to play things safe rather than making a bold choice about a character. You know, sometimes a director wants to see you make a choice and then they can rein you in and, and, and shape that character to fit their vision. Now, when you're in an audition, you don't always have all those answers. So it's up to you to invent those answers. Take a look at the breakdown and any information that you got with the casting session, with the audition. You want to just see how they described the character and then anything you can see in the script that indicates what kind of person this character is. Uh, how they react to something that some somebody says. Are they funny? Are they quick-witted? Do they take a lot of pauses? So you want to just sort of find those little subtle clues in the script and then use that to build your character. But let's talk more about actually having a script and having a full character that you can realize from that. The script is going to dictate most of what you need to know about your character. It should all be in the script. Read the script carefully and listen to everything that your character says because you're going to get a lot of information about them and their history and what kind of character they are. But you also want to pay attention to what all the other characters in the script say about your character. How they describe you is going to give you more truth about how you should play the character than how the character describes themselves. So if a character says, oh, she's such a gossip or um, he's really, really reserved and shy, that's going to give you more information about how you're going to want to build that character because the other characters are usually telling the truth of the script. Now after you have mined all this information from the script and studied a little bit, you want to come up with three adjectives, maybe four adjectives, but start with three that describe your character. And that could be like, you know, funny, shy, eccentric, wishy-washy, mean, greedy. Come up with those three adjectives and then that gives you some way to start to approach the character. And then you can start saying the lines with those adjectives in mind, you know, and it, it will change the way you play the scene. And it's okay to switch those adjectives out and see kind of what works. And you would do this in the rehearsal process or working on your own. A acting coach Warner Laughlin works with Hollywood film actors like Ryan Reynolds and she encourages you to do a, a very long backstory for your character. Back to their childhood. You want to know who your parents are, how you were raised, what kind of climate you were born in, or were you born uh, with rich parents, were you born into poverty, are your parents still alive, what is your relationship with them like? Or did they die and how did that affect you as a child or as a teenager when they died? What Warner Laughlin is really looking for is a key event in your childhood. This is something you would make up. It's not going to be in the script. Uh, a key event that was either traumatic or just life-changing for the character. Maybe uh, your father took your your doll or your baseball glove away from you and threw it in the garbage and that changed your your outlook on life or maybe you had to go get work as a child because your parents died and suddenly you're supporting your little brother you know whatever the case may be you create an event and that event kind of drums up a need or a fear. This is an overriding need or fear for your character and you want to pick one of these and um, I'm going to list a few of those needs and fears over here. These are needs and fears from Warner Laughlin's book and um, you know you can pick any one of them, try it out and if that doesn't work go ahead and pick another one. It should be supported by the script and sort of your overall feeling of the character. But some of these might be like uh, a need for companionship, a need to be right or it can be a fear, a fear of of abandonment, a fear of authority, a fear of uh, responsibility. You give your character one of these needs or fears 
and then that gives you a really overriding arc to play with the characters. So everything will go through that lens, everything will go through that filter when you play your character. Even if it's kind of buried in the character's inner psychology and you don't really, the character doesn't really know about it, you, the actor, will know about it. Then you want to just ask some questions about your character. How do they sound? You know, are they from a foreign country or a different part of the country that you're from? And do they have an accent? Do they speak, you know, really rapidly or do they speak very slowly and distinctly? Do they finish their sentences? Do they cut people off when they talk? And what is the timbre of their voice? Do they have a high-pitched voice or a very low, gruff voice? Uh, and where does that come from? Then you want to talk about how the character moves. If they're an older character, for instance, maybe they went to the war, maybe they have a limp, uh, maybe the character has uh, pain somewhere in their back or their neck or something like that. So you want to define those kind of things and give your character a weight and a, a way of moving. Are they lanky? Are they slouchy? Do they move through the air like a slug or do they flit about like a butterfly? You know, give uh, an animal characteristic to your character. We do that as an acting exercise, but it really helps. How educated is your character? How smart are they? Do they think fast on their feet? Do they have street smarts? Do they have a college education or did they drop out at grade school? How they respond to the stimuli given to them is how well they understand the stimuli that's given to them. And that will be dictated heavily by the script, but you need to make a decision about that. And then how does the character express their emotions? Some people bottle up their emotions and they, they just really don't let things out. And that character will always be fighting back tears, fighting back anger, fighting back happiness. Whereas in a character that is very emotionally expressive and empathetic is going to cry at the drop of a hat or is going to laugh at everybody's jokes and that's going to really characterize them. So you need to decide where you are on that emotional spectrum. Just one thing to note, when you're creating a character that maybe is a less sympathetic character in terms of the story, maybe there's a, a villain or something like that, you never want to play yourself as a villain just for the sake of being a villain or as a bad person. Even if you're playing a, a psychopathic murderer, you have a background and a history, something that led you to get to that point where you became a psychopathic murderer. So you need to find out what it is in your psyche and your history that led you to that point, and that will help inform your character. But no person is a villain because they want to be a villain. They're a villain because they want something that is opposed to the hero of the story. And that's what makes them a villain. You have to have sympathy for your character. The needs and wants of your character have to be very close to your heart. Even if they're not really close to your heart in reality, you have to make them close to your heart as an actor. That's your job. So combine all of those things, how you look, sound, move, uh, something from your childhood, your fear, your need, what the character wants, how uh, people speak about the character, their tempo, their cadence, all of those things, decide all that. You don't have to go through and do a, an entire backstory and, and know exactly everything from their history, although some actors do that, because um, you're not playing that in the scene you know, or the script. If there are references to your past, obviously you'll be playing them, but you know that's in the script. So, so anything that's not in the script is not super crucial for you to play, but it's also helpful for you to know and fill in those blanks that aren't in the script. Hopefully this was helpful for you to learn how to play a character and how to approach a character at your next audition or your next uh, project. And if it was helpful, please hit that like button because that helps me out more than anything else. You don't gotta buy anything, it's free. It's just right down there, it's the like button. Thanks again for joining me. We will talk to you soon.